Here we go. Yeah, nice big rainbow. Big rainbow. Well guys, today we're on Estes Lake in Estes Park, Colorado. We're doing another Stillwater session today. But the cool thing about today's episode is I had a viewer from Scotland send me a bunch of flies. Here's the box of flies that he sent. But I'm gonna start off today fishing a washing line method with one of the with a few of the flies he sent me. With lock style fly fishing, like I mentioned before, you're always fishing with the wind at your back, always going towards your flies. So you're always drifting. It's a cool way to fish. It's not not as boring as just anchoring up or standing in one spot. You're always moving, almost like you're fishing in a river from a drifting boat. I'll show you guys how to, how I rigged the washing line method at home in a bit. So one of the cool things about this area is just really the mountains. You hit some giant peaks in the background. Really pretty area. I've only fished this place from the shore, never from the boat. So I'm fishing the first few feet of the water column right now. The line is just should just be sinking fast enough to get below the waves. And then I'm fishing washing. So guys, like I mentioned before, one of the cool things about this week's episode is I'm testing out some flies that I received from a viewer all the way from Scotland. So thank you for the flies. I really like them. I really enjoy them. They're nice looking patterns and I'm going to have a lot of fun fishing with them this summer. But today I got the pattern on Wednesday and I was excited to try it out. So I decided to get my boat and get on the lake somewhere. So I decided to go to Estes Lake. So I'd been there a few days before and had fished really well. I fished from the bank and caught a bunch of fish on like buggy type patterns. So on my way up to the lake, I pretty much had in mind that I was going to start off with a washing line method no matter what. But as soon as I got on the lake, I could see that it was probably not the best method to start out with. But anyway, I started out with it for a while and fished it for a couple good drifts. Like I said, with lock style fly fishing, you're starting with the wind at your back and you're always kind of moving towards your flies. So you're drifting. So I drifted probably a good 400 yards, three to 400 yards, and then turned back around and started to drift over. But during the whole drift, I just never touched much fish. I think I had maybe one or two early and that was it and then nothing else so I ended up switching off that method but even though I didn't catch fish with that method I just kind of wanted to go over with you guys how I set up that day so first off I decided to start with the candy booby on point pretty cool pattern it's got white and pink marabou it's got some flashy orange eyes mylar on the body and I think they're four mil booby eyes awesome little pattern so I started with this on point and then next, I fished a midge. He sent me a couple buzzers and midges. So I started with a midge. My next dropper, and then on my top dropper, I fished a, it's called a doll bark. This is just a pattern, of, kind of a nim pattern. It can imitate a bunch of things. It's a really good pattern. This is a pattern I actually do fish a lot here in the States. Um, his is tied slightly different than my patterns, but still, I do fish a lot. It is a really good confidence pattern. Um, but this is how I set it up, and this is kind of the idea of it. It's obviously not to scale, but I like to hang the nymphs off the tag. Even my buggers will hang off the tag like that. So just imagine that this side is my sinking line, like a slower sinking line. I start off with a slow, a slow glass line in the video, just something to sink slightly below the waves. It's really slow sinking line and then the booby on point. So what the booby does, you cast it out, three hard pulls, and then the nymphs will start to sink slowly like that. So with the booby up floating high, the slower sinking or floating line up here will kind of give you the U-shape, the flies is U-shape. And the cool thing about it is when you pull, as you can see as I pull, they'll rise in the water column like the natural as well. And it's also a good way to fish to keep the flies higher in the water column or keep them at a certain depth if you know where they're cruising, especially if they're eating nymphs. But yeah, it's a cool pattern to do. One thing to make sure you do is you cast out. I like to see the booby pop the water two or three times so I know that all my flies are straightened out before I let them to sink through the water column. And another thing to keep in mind is if you watch me in the video, I'll cast it out 
and I'm figure eighting, and it looks like I'm moving my flies because I'm figure eighting, but what I'm actually doing is I'm just picking up enough slack to keep up with the amount of drift that the boat's doing because I'm fishing lock style and I'm drifting. I'm picking up just enough line that it's just moving with the boat. So what my flies are actually doing when I'm doing slow figure eights is they're actually dropping. And then you'll see me eventually is I'll either give it little taps and move them up to the surface or longer pulls. So when I'm giving the longer pulls, they're moving up. And when I'm figure eighting, they're dropping through the water column like that. So that's kind of the idea that you want to have with it. And this is a really cool method to fish. I don't think I don't think it's fished really much here in the States, but it's just like another way to fish nymphs in a lake. So you're not just fishing with an indicator. I know a lot of us fish with indicators if we're fishing nymphs, but this is, gives you just a little bit different presentation opposed to if you're fishing an indicator, the flies are just like this. So this will kind of give you more of a, a little more natural presentation my biggest fish I've ever caught on the reservation came out of Reservation Lake and I was actually touching a bunch of stockies and I got tired of playing with a little stocky so I put on washing line method with some nymphs just to try something different and ended up getting a nice big 26 inch brown maybe six seven pound brown on Res Lake with it in the grassy flat area so it's a pretty cool method also one of my best um, sessions in competition fishing I fished against a Team USA World Team member and beat him by more than 10 fish in one session. I was fishing this method, but I was actually, instead of using little nymphs, I was using damsel nymphs. I had a, like a damsel booby on point, and then two other damsel nymphs up my dropper, and then just kind of fishing the same method. And I, I would get a lot of the bigger fish on the booby, cause, so it pulls when you pull and it floats up. So I had a lot of big fish on that damsel kind of float up to the surface and take. So it's a pretty cool method. You can either, you can do the same thing with the fob. I haven't really fished much with the fob, truthfully. Don't have much confidence in it yet. So I'm gonna start messing with them and fishing them a little more. But with the foam eyes, you can kind of do the same thing. You can replace the fob with the booby and get that same floating method. But what ended up working the best that day was this pattern. Here it's the cat's whiskers bugger. So like I said, the buggers wasn't working, the washing line method wasn't working, and it's like first cast, as soon as I switched to this pattern, boom, fish on. But even then, it still was a pretty slow day. Um, like I said, the clarity of the water, I think had something to do with it. The fish weren't really feeding as much as they were earlier in the week, but this pattern still got me bunch of fish and even got me a nice fish but I just wanted to share with you guys the flies and show you guys how I rig my washing line method so we'll get back out to the lake so like I said even though I'm moving my line right now I'm not actually moving my flies I'm just keeping up with the drift because like I said one thing you're always moving and when you get to a certain spot I like to just either give it a few little taps and just do the same thing pick up the line stop them let it sit so you're basically nymph fishing with little bugs and the booby on point. You can do this with, I do it with buggers too, certain situations, maybe in the colder months when they're not moving. Oh, I just had a tap. There we go. Right off the bat, so I just switched up. I was fishing nymphs. No luck, so I switched to a cat whisking right off the bat. First cast, nice fish, feisty fish too. Yeah, nice healthy rainbow. So you can see the fly tug. It's cat whisker, just like a little woolly bugger. Really flashy, but that's cool. First cast, and this is my first fish with the the flies from Scotland. I tried a bunch of nymphs, like I said, no luck, and I switched up. First cast.
There we go, finally. Yeah, number two. It took a while. This one is on the cruncher pattern up top. Top dropper. Comer pattern up top. Finally. Finally. It's been a while. It's been a tough day again. Hopefully we can figure something out this last hour though and get more fish in the bucket. But same thing. Water's kind of all color. And yeah, just been really, really tough. But oh, number two. Here we go. Yeah, nice big rainbow. Big rainbow. Good 20 inch fish. Nice big fish. Strong fighting fish. Oof. Took the point fly, that real flashy Fritz stuff. It's pissed off fish. Oh yeah, I got him. Got him. Big old rainbow. Yeah. Big old rainbow. Today I fished with just the flies from, that were sent to me from Scotland. Um, it was tough though. Water was all color, pretty dirty. I think the lake's turning over, it looks like, or it just could be dirty from the, maybe the river feeding into the lake. So it wasn't the best conditions and it fished pretty tough today, moved around a bunch. But yeah, caught a few fish with uh, patterns that I normally wouldn't fish with, so that's pretty cool. And Caught a big 22, 23 inch rainbow on a cat whisker bugger. So overall good day. This probably isn't gonna be the, the only time we'll use these patterns, but I expect the lake to be cleared and there will be a lot more fish. So a lot more rising action now, but thanks for watching and subscribe.